Melbourne, Australia television reporter, said his crew filmed UFOs for seven minutes Saturday night over the eastern region of New Zealand's South Island. On the 21st of December 1978, cargo plane pilots John Randall and Keith Hine observed strange light phenomena over the sea near the South Island of New Zealand. The objects were also picked up by Wellington air traffic control radar and reports reached local media. Ten days later, on the 31st of December, producers at Australia's Channel 10 dispatched reporter Quentin Fogarty with a camera crew to attempt to find the same UFOs along the same flight path. And they did. Air traffic controllers were recording strange blips on their radar. Here is what reporter Quentin Fogarty said as he traced an airline flight that reported seeing UFOs last month. We're now in the radar room at Christchurch Airport. It's about uh, quarter to two, and in about another 20 minutes, uh, we intend to take off again in the Odyssey and uh, retrace the route we took only a few moments earlier. Uh, we've just heard from Wellington radar that there are still targets in the Kaikoura area. So this time we're hoping to get better film than we did last time, and uh, all I can say is we'll see what happens. The New Zealand case is of considerable importance in the history of ufology because of the residue of information that's available afterwards. We have the film itself and the tape recordings made by Quentin Fogarty on the aircraft and of prime importance is we have the tape recording made by the Wellington Air Traffic Control Center and it provides a history of the sighting minute by minute. We're about now three minutes out of Christchurch Airport and on our starboard side we can see two very bright lights, one much brighter than the other, it is like a very, very bright star and just below it is another light not quite so bright. Just before midnight, Fogarty went airborne with cargo pilot Bill Startup. The beginning of the flight was uneventful. Then at 12.05, Fogarty and the crew saw strange lights and objects coming towards them from the right side of the plane. Fogarty turned on his camera and they began filming. Those two lights appear to be traveling with us. They're still off the starboard wing. The brighter light is still above the other and uh, it's moved a little further ahead of the other. It's extremely bright, much brighter than any of the other stars in the sky. Ground radar observed the objects and the control tower confirmed the sighting and recorded the conversation. What follows is the actual audio of this unusually well-documented event. The storm target is showing at uh, 11 o'clock at 3 miles. Uh, 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 yes, uh, 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 Captain Startup said that the object, or target, was initially ahead of him, then travelled at an unbelievable speed past his left side. He quickly banked the plane left in an attempt to make visual contact. From the ground, Wellington air traffic radioed a chilling message to the captain. They had picked up yet another target on his left side, and this one was closing in on the plane. I'm now looking over towards the right of the aircraft, and we have an object confirmed by Wellington radar. It's been following us for quite a while. It's about four miles away, and it looks like a very faint star, but then it emits a very bright white green light. Captain Startup was able to get close enough to determine that the object had an array of bright blue lights pulsing at a rapid rate. To his shock, the object had increased in size. There was an interesting radar event where the uh, object, some object got so close to the aircraft it looked to Wellington radar as if the aircraft radar target image had doubled in size. The double sized target continued to appear on radar screens for 36 seconds, then returned to its original size. Yeah, blue lights right there. This is the object which was uh, apparently traveling along with the aircraft. It was picked up on aircraft radar. Dr. Bruce McAbee received a 16mm copy of the Argosy UFO film directly from the Australian television network in 1979. Roll 4, take 10. The complete and unedited film has never been made available before. Experts believe that these images are the most comprehensive and frightening UFO evidence ever captured on film. 
This is the famous New Zealand film obtained uh, the night of December 31st, 1978. The cameraman is sitting in the seat between the pilot and the co-pilot with images dancing around because he was carrying it on his shoulder. They saw this light to their right. And this light, as time goes on, will fade in and out, takes on various shapes. This is the flashing light that you have to slow down and look at frame by frame to see what happens when he goes from very bright white down to dim orange and see the image went over to the side then he turned the camera a little bit in order to pull it back into the center. That uh, other target that has been following us has now been joined by two others so we now at this stage have uh, three unidentified flying objects just off our right wing.